Gmar Yoma. Perik Shlishi. Amalahim Hamemune. Hamemune is appointed. Ah. So the appointed said to them. Um, Daf Lamed Aleph, page 31. Well, I would have thought Hamemune would have meant the believing one or something like that. Oh. Or linking it to Ma- like Ma'amin. Ma'amin. I wonder if there's something in there. Okay. Um, we'll start from on the previous page. Amar Lei Abayla Rav Yosef. Damas Serech Tfila Zo. According to Rabbi Yehudu, who said that, this is a reminder immersion. Chotet, does an external object interpose or anal chotet, or does it not interpose? That's an excellent question. Amar Lei Rav Yosef said, or by Kod Tukund Rabbanan. The law is whatever the rabbi is enacted, and or right to tuck and they enacted in the manner of the biblical law. So the law of interposition applies in this case. Which case? The case is uh, an immersion that is only a reminder. Remember that first immersion that was done reminder. was yes. a reminder immersion. That's right. Because it was one extra. Yes. Amalei, uh, yeah. Amalei Abayel says, Bia b'miktsat shema bia or law is a partial entry into the courtyard, considered an entry or not. So this is in, re- in regard to the reminder immersion. Amalei, Rav Yosef said, Bia b'miktsat shema bia or law is a partial entry into the courtyard, Oh, of the Metzora proves that immersion is necessary for, for even a partial entry. Right? Because they have to go to Mikvah and then mm. put their thumbs in. Shehem diyab b'miktzat because they constitute a partial entry. Mitanya nusot nabraisa Metzora tundela Metzora first immerses for Omed v'sha'ar nikanor and then stands in the Nikanor gate with his hand and foot in the courtyard. Ibailahu then quiet in the academy. Mahu Shia says Saki Narukha Vishkot, what is the law about whether one may fashion a long knife and slaughter an animal in a temple courtyard while remaining outside the courtyard. That is fascinating. Is it the essence of the service that requires immersion or is it entry into the courtyard that requires immersion? So can you cut at a distance? Mm. <laughs> From outside, where yeah, you don't need to immerse first. Si bay leven zoma, bay leven zoma. You can inquire according to ben zoma. Si bay le rabbanan pligei alei de rabbi yoda. You can inquire according to those who will argue with rabbi yoda, who will leniently. Si bay leven zoma. Ad kan le mechayv ben zoma ela le gavai until he is ben zoma obligate one to immerse, and only that's only when you're actually inside the vault. Le varai. Law, but if you're outside, you don't need to immerse. So there, you, there you go. You yeah, can do it according. Burma. You don't have to yeah. do it according to Benzal. Uh, oh, Dilma Ate Leim Shuche. Perhaps, um, maybe he also requires immersion, because it may occur that the Kohen will be pulled into the courtyard while slaughtering Tibayla Rabbanan to flee Gaya the Rabbi Yehuda. And you can inquire according to the rabbis who disagree with Rabbi Yehuda, like this Ad Khan. Law Kamre Rabbanan Hatam de Law Ka Avid La Avodan. Until he did the rabbi say, until he did the rabbi say, um, a non Matura need not immerse. Um, only where he, only where he is not performing a temple service. So basically, if you're not performing a temple service, you don't have to immerse. I'm pretty sure that's what that sentence says. Aval hach the ka avid avodah, but he, when he's mm. performing a sacrificial service, law, he would not be permitted to slaughter without without first immersing. It's the same thing. It's just worded a little bit different. How do, how is that part? However, here where he's performing service, no, they would require right. immersion. Right. Question mark. Or do you my law shna? Or perhaps there's no difference. And they would not require immersion under any circumstances. Gemara concludes the dilemma shall stand unresolved until Mashiach. The Mishnah 
then said, Chamesh Tefillot Vassarat Kiddush in Tovel, the Kohen Gadol performs five immersions and ten sanctifications. This is Son Yom Kippur. Tan Rabbanan, Chamesh Tefillot Vassarat Kiddush in Tovel, Kohen Gadol Mekadesh Pabayom. The Kohen Gadol performs five immersions and ten sanctifications on the day of Yom Kippur. He's calling the Kodesh Tevet HaParva, and all these immersions are in the holy, uh, are in the holy, in the Parva chamber. Chutz Mirishana Shahita Bachol, except the first one, which was in an unsanctified area, Al Gabe Shahar Hamain, which was on top of the water gate. Uvat Sad, but not with the chief, and Uvat Sad, Lish Kakla Haita, and it was on the side of the Kondra Bull's chamber, that particular place. Amar Abaye, Shamine, derived from this, Ain, Ain, Etam, there you go, Kavoha Mikarka, Azara, Eshim, Vashala Shamot. So we can derive from this inner time is 23 amot higher than the floor of the courtyard. In a time being how far away from 23 kilometers? 20... Roughly 20 kilometers. Roughly 20 kilometers. 20 kilometers away. Um, Zitnan. We learned in the Mishnah, Kol Haptachim Shah Yosham, all the gates that were there in the temple, Bovhan Eshim Amavarachan Eser Amot, their height was 20 Amot, and their width was 10 Amot. Height was 20, and their width was 10. Chutz Mishal Ulam, except for the gateway of the Ulam, um, 13, which was the antechamber of the sanctuary, um, which was twice that. So it was 40 cubits high and 20 cubits wide. Ah, the Tanyan was taught in a Baraisa. The Rachat Pesaro, the Torah says, He shall immerse his flesh in the water. The Maim, me mikvah. So in the water means in the waters of a mikvah. Kol Pesaro, his entire flesh. That teaches, Maim should call Gufo Ola Behen. Um, he, the water is sufficient for his whole body to enter at one time. The Kamahen, and how much water is that? Ama al Ama Burum Shalosh Amot. It's an Ama by an Ama by the height of three Amot. The Shiaru Chachmi May Mikve Arbaim Sa'a, and the sages calculated the water of a mikveh to be 40 Sa'a. Interesting. I mean, look at this. This gets back to something that we learned ages ago right. when I commented on how short the population right. was. Right. Right. If it's three. Well, three amot is not bad. Well, three amot is somewhere between four and a half and five feet. Yeah, mm. that's not bad. So you can dip down under that. Yeah, exactly. But just think, it's yeah, one and a half wide. Yeah. It becomes it's shoulder width. Just, just. And when you lower your body to the ground, it's because you're displacing water, so the water's going to come up. Oh no, it's a miracle. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Uh, so, since the water gate was 20 amot high and the mikvah on top was 3 amot high, any time must have been slightly more than 23 amot higher than the floor of the courtyard to be able to supply water to that mikvah, since water does not run higher than its source. The Ha'ika, top of page 31b, the Ha'ika Amatikra, that's him. But there is the Amma ceiling over the airspace of the water gate by Mazira and the Amma concrete pavement under the mikvah as well. Um, so what about that? Included in your calculations. Sha'arim Deveta Mikdash. When you construct the gates of the holy temple, Kevan Dashesh and Ninhu, since they were made of marble, the Mashehu Ade Lehu, the builders, were able to fashion their ceilings with only a slight amount of that material. And uh, here's got the marble, they constructed them with minimal thickness. Right, that's better. The ha'ika hayech mashehu, but there is still that slight amount of height provided, blah, blah, blah. So the Gemara answers, Kevan de la Havai Amta, since this additional amount was an ama, la chashivla, abai did not count it. I was not an ama. It, it, uh, indeed, however, since the ceiling was not a whole cubit, it does not come through from this calculation. Um, parcel, so now the Mishnah finishes up by saying, Parcel Sadin shall put the Kule. They spread a linen sheet uh, in front of the kind of doll that was, wasn't it? Mishnah mm-hmm. shall put what is unique about this linen. Kidama Rav Kahana, it's like that which Rav Kahana said. 
Today, Shiyaki Shabbat at Hayom Bivik Day Butz, it's said in the Kangato, we realize that the special services of the day is performed with linen vestments, Hachanami, Shiyaki Shabbat at Hayom Bivik Day Butz. Here, too, it's said that the Kangato will realize that the service of the day is with linen vestments. And he translated that to Jesus <coughs> in fine linen garments. So maybe there's a, an element of, of quality in the word "boots," or is there something in the Ifrit? Um, I don't know. The big day boots, it just says. Normally, the Kohen Gadol serves in his eight special vestments, which include four made of gold. That's the head plate, the breastplate, the apron, and the robe, which had golden bells hanging from its hem. However, in Yom Kippur, he performs the special services wearing only four vestments made entirely of linen. This is in the earlier part, then he changes into the elaborate ones after the ah. goat's been sent off. Ah, so that's, that's according to Rashi. A linen sheet was therefore used to shield him while he, while he changed as a reminder of those special services that would follow. That sounds reasonable enough. Yep. Right. Mishnah. Pasha Tiarad Vatala. The Kohen Gadol undressed to send into the mikvah, that is, and immersed. Allah Vinistapag, as he ascended, and dried himself. Did you have dried himself? Yes. Heziulo Bijay Zahavalavash, they brought him the gold investments, and he donned them. Vikidesh Yadav Raglav, he sanctified his hands and feet, or washed them basically. Heziulo Et Hakamij, they brought him. Why would he, why would you sanctify? Wouldn't the mikveh have sanctified them? Why would you put your gold vestments on and then you sanctify your hands and feet? That's very weird. Maybe, and I'm only guessing, but maybe because in the process of getting used, you may have touched unwittingly some part of your body. You know, it's best not to touch. Okay. And it's Maybe. Maybe. We um, may find it out in the Gemara. Yeah. Hopefully. So, um, Heviu Lo they brought him the Tamid offering. Karatzo, he made an incision in his throat. Umeirek Acher Shkita Al Yado, and another kind completed the slaughter for him. Shkelet Hadamuz Rako, he received the blood and <coughs> sprinkled it. You have? It's <coughs> in with all of as soon as the slaughter was completed, the high priest received the blood and the vessel was sprinkled as on the wall. Nichnas lahaktir k'toret shel shachar. He entered the sanctuary to burn to burn the morning incense. Ula heitevet hanerot to prepare the lands of the menorah. Ula hakrivet haroshvet ha'evarim to offer the head of the limbs of the tamid. The hachavitin the et haydain the chavitin meal offering and the wine libation. K'toret shel shachar the morning incense. So the morning incense was offered between the blood service of the morning summit and the burning of the limbs. Shall ben ha'arba'im, the afternoon incense, ben evarim lelin zachim, that was offered between the limbs burning and the taking of the limbs up to the altar and the pouring of the libations oh. that accompany the offering. Okay, so he's got, they've got burning of the limbs and you've got taking of the limbs up to the altar. The morning incense was burned between the receiving and sprinkling of the blood and, and the burning of the limbs. Mm. And the afternoon incense was burned between the taking of the limbs up to the altar and the pouring of libations that accompanied the offering. Mm. In both cases, all you've got is the word Ivarim. So I hope maybe it'll explain it further. Im hayakohen gadol zaken or istnis. If the kohen gadol was old or delicate, mechamin lo chamin. They warmed water for him. Umatirin the tochat zanen and poured it uh, on Yom Kippur. This is into the cold water of the mikvah. The bleach of tafig tinatan. So the mikvah water would lose its chill. Yeah. Very nice. Gemara. Amaruha Rabbanon Kameh de Rav Papa. So some rabbis said 
controlling the presence of Rav Papa Nikon Shahad, the local Rabbi Mayor. This, about the... This Mishnah. This Mishnah does not accord with Rabbi Mayor, the Rabbi Mayor, because if it was according to Rabbi Mayor, Kevan Dama Tarei Al Visha Vid Lehu. Since he said the Kongado performs two sanctifications for the donning of, of the vessel, Tachan Ami Leavid, here also the co- let the Kohen help perform two sanctifications for his first donning of the golden vestments. Amalehu Rav Papa, Rav Papa said to him, to reply, Ben the Rabbi Nam, Ben the Rabbi Mayor. But according to the Rabbi, and according to Rabbi Mayor, Chad Avshita Devikte Kodesh, one is for the re- one sanctification is for the removal of the holy vestments, Chad Avshita, and one is for the donning of the new vestments. The Hacha. Daha comes again, and here um, they argue about, or I would say their difference is um, this verse. Um, we can quote Upash, which verse is it? It's Vaykra. Upashat, he shall remove. And it goes on the linen garments that he put on when he entered the sanctuary and leave him there. And he shall wash his flesh in water. Hang on, that's, Upa, that's our pasha. Yes, and it's rachat. Well, that's all part of the same yes. pasha. So rachat is wash. And he shall wash his flesh in water in a sacred place. And then lavash. And he shall put on his garments. Leviticus 16, 23 to 24. Rabbi Meir Sabah, Rabbi Meir holds, Matish Visha, the verse compares uh, sanctification for the removal with sanctification for the donning for the following reason. Oh, I see. So the verse compares sanctification for the removal of the used vestments with the sanctification for the donning of the new vestments as follows. Just as when donning the new vestments, the kind of all dons them afterwards, sanctifies the hands and feet. So too, when removing the, the used vestments, he removes them, and afterwards sanctifies his hands and feet. The rabbi and Savrei, the rabbis hold, Makish Peshita Livvisha, the verse compares uh, sanctification for the removal with sanctification for the donning. Ma Livvisha Keshua Levush Mekadesh, just as when donning the new vestments, the Kohen got all sanctifies his hands and feet when he's dressed. Afshita Keshua Levush Mekadesh, so when removing the used vestments, he sanctifies his hands and feet while he's still dressed. So he should be sanctifying his hands and feet before taking off the garments, I think they're suggesting. Really? Is that what they're suggesting? I think so. There's a lo- long bit of explanation I made. Go ahead. Happen. Therefore, when he completes the service, he sanctifies his hands and feet and only then removes the garments. However, the first time that the high priest dons the priestly garments on Yom Kippur, he certainly does not require two sanctifications since at that point he does not remove any other garments. Obviously, I mean... What was that last year? Uh, okay. However, the first time that the high priest dons the priestly vestments on yes. Yom Kippur, he certainly does not require two sanctifications, since at that point he does not remove any other right. garments. Right. It is means the mikvah. Mm. That's exact. That was the point I was making before. I think you could actually make the point that he was in the mikvah. I'm really the rubber. I mean, the mikvah doesn't work. Omi matzit amrat hachiba. Can you say that? I mean, can you say that he doesn't require two sanctifications? But Tanya was so embraced that Prasul Tadin shall put be no levin ha'am. They spread a linen sheet between the Kohen Gadol and the people. Pashat v'yarad v'tavol. He undressed, descended into the mikveh, immersed. Allah v'nistapak. He ascended and dried himself. He viu alav v'zahav v'lavash. He brought in the golden vestments and he donned them. V'kidesh yadav v'raglav. And he sanctified his hands and feet. Rabbi Meir Omer, Pashat v'kidesh yadav v'raglav. He undressed and sanctified his hands and feet. V'yarad v'tavol. Descended. Into the mikveh and immersed in. So, so who? So, Rabbi Mary is saying that he sanctified before he went before in. he went into the mikveh. Allah <laughs> He ascended. Hi, Mary. 
Um, I love in respect many of Senator Andrew and Charles. Have you all loved the days of Havala Lash? They put in the gold investments and he done them. Vicky Dash, he has Avara Glover, and then he sanctified his hands up for the second time. So there you go. Um, Amala Hu, so Ralph Papa said to his students, Tanya Tanya equals Tona Bracer. He could taught. I will retract my opinion, which was based on logical analysis <coughs> in favour of an explicit answer that contradicts that opinion. Then we can the last we finish there? Yes, because the last few words run into the next page. 